What is up, everyone? I am Jared Winkler, and I am four years, four months, and 13 days nicotine free. I feel so bad that it's taken me this long to make another video. It's crazy. I enjoy making these videos. I enjoy responding to comments on these videos. These videos are like super fun and important to me. And for whatever reason, it seems like I make one every year or so. But I have had some comments recently where people have reached out and they've wondered if I'm still quit. And I am still quit. I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. And like always, I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk about a couple of like smoking related things that have come up in the past. Past year. So number one, somebody commented on a video where I talked about nicotine replacement. And as a lot of you probably know, if you've watched my other videos, I'm not a big fan of nicotine replacement. I'm all about cold turkey, but that doesn't mean that I don't believe that nicotine replacement can work for you. I just don't think anybody really needs it. Basically, the comment said, listen, dude, I am the most addicted person ever to nicotine, you don't understand, and I need nicotine replacement. There can't be cold turkey for me. I have to have nicotine gum or nicotine patches or something to quit, and how dare you make a video where you suggest that you could just quit cold turkey. And I just wanted to double down on the fact that there is nobody who absolutely needs nicotine replacement to quit. Anyone can quit cold turkey, literally anyone. It just comes down to being prepared enough and understanding well enough what's going on with you so that you can get through the points that are usually the most difficult to deal with, which is really early in your quit. When you're dealing with withdrawal symptoms that maybe are a little bit heavier than they will be in the future, basically you're just in a period where you're breaking your relationship with your addiction. When it comes down, I understand that there are some people that don't necessarily know how to prepare in a way where they won't need the nicotine replacement. I also know that there are a class of people because I was one of them who's looking for nicotine replacement to make a quit super easy. And unfortunately, that's not gonna be most people's experience. Most people aren't gonna just have like, a super easy quit because the nicotine replacement just takes away all of your withdrawal symptoms and like just makes it an absolute breeze. When it comes down, even with NRT, I would say even more so with NRT, you're going to have to put in a lot of work because when it comes down, you're not just like on day one breaking your relationship with nicotine. You're in fact prolonging your addiction to nicotine. So you're going through like the mental distress of your day one quit. And then for a prolonged period, you're gonna remain addicted to nicotine, lowering your dosage, which takes a lot of discipline anyway. I would say most people probably don't even do their NRT regimen correctly before they quit and go back to nicotine. And I could be wrong about that, but that's my experience. I never was able to whittle down the way that I was supposed to. I would just do NRT for a while, miss smoking the whole time that I'm trying either the patches of the gum or whatever, and it never really does the trick. But in any case, you go through the mental distress of the initial like getting onto it, and then you're kind of in a state of distress as you're lowering the amount of nicotine you're ingesting until you're supposed to be at zero. And at that point, you're gonna go through the day one thing that you essentially went through on your first day of quitting smoking. So it seems like a whole bunch of mental distress that you could literally pack up and just do on day one. But in any case, the big point that I am trying to make is I completely reject anybody's theory that there are some people that have to have nicotine replacement. There is nobody that needs to. Everybody who is addicted to uh, nicotine or smoke cigarettes can quit through the cold turkey method, literally anybody in the world. And that's just the way that it is. Yeah, it does just take some preparation. Onto the next topic, I also got a comment from someone. It was on one where I talked about alcohol consumption and quitting. First of all, the person miscategorized the main point of what I said. I will tell you that I have a pretty good understanding of what goes into a quit at this point, how to be successful in a quit, but I would tell you that my experiences are certainly not the only 
experiences. I think that lots of people will quit lots of different ways. Like we just talked about with NRT. NRT didn't work for me. That's not to say that it won't work for other people. So when I explain my experiences or the theories that I have about it, I understand that they might not completely comport with your experiences. So I guess when I make these statements about these things, I'm not trying to say that it's the only one true way. I'm prefacing all this because the comment that I got on this video where I talked about alcohol consumption and quitting, the person started off by saying, you're completely wrong. You can drink alcohol and quit. Well, I never said that you couldn't. What I have said in the past that when you consume alcohol, Alcohol, especially in the beginning of a quit, there are times when you might lose control and start smoking again, where if you had not been consuming alcohol, you would have been able to retain that control and continue your quit. Not to say you wouldn't blow it completely sober. Lots of people do all the time. I have blown quits sober plenty of times. So that's the first point, the fact that alcohol can deter you from your goal of quitting. But I would also say that there's some people that have plenty of discipline when they have a drink or two drinks where they won't blow it. They'll be able to stick to their quit perfectly fine. Now, I would say using my best judgment, it's probably a good idea to refrain from drinking early on in your quit because why play with fire? Why not stay completely level-headed through the beginning of your quit and not give yourself the opportunity to kind of mess up? Now, I did say one of the caveats is if you are a daily drinker or if you have kind of dependency issues with alcohol, if it comes down to you refraining from drinking is as much a challenge as it is quitting smoking, that's probably not gonna work. And now again, this is a situation that could work. You could quit smoking and quit drinking at the same time, but I would absolutely suggest that you don't do that. I would tackle one thing at a time. And so if you are a person that drinks daily, then I would suggest probably stick to your habit of drinking while you're trying to quit smoking, just because you don't wanna flip over your entire world. So going back to this comment, this guy said, you are completely wrong. You can continue drinking through your quit. I did. And look at me. I'm quit. I'm, I'm an example of a person who has made it to the other side. This person was 10 days into their quit. And I don't want to diminish what 10 days is because in the life of a quit, 10 days is a million years. It's like the first 10 days is arguably like the most difficult part. So yeah, you made it through a very difficult period. Period. But there's nobody that can say to me, look, something you said is completely off base. I can tell you because I got through my quit. I'm a quit person. I'm clean. I'm done. It's been 10 days. Like it just, it, that's not reality. You have a very long way to go. And I would tell you that you still are in a period where drinking while you're trying to quit could potentially be pretty risky. You could be in a situation where you are going to lose your quit. And I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm not saying, I'm saying that to keep you mentally prepared because if you are a person that doesn't need to include that in your lifestyle, if it's easy for you to say, I'm not going to drink for the next three, four months, if that's like super easy for you, do it quit it. I, I don't know what the numbers are, but you are a certain percentage more likely to continue your quit. It's just common sense. It's completely rational and logical. And not to say that there is a hundred percent chance that you are going to um, not be able to maintain your quit if you do drink. I think I've made the point. I think I've, I've hammered it home. Man, there are a whole bunch of other little issues I've wanted to bring up. One thing, uh, so if you've watched my videos early on in this quit, I talked about neighbors who had quit smoking and things in the beginning. And I will tell you one of the guys who had quit smoking that went back to smoking who didn't read the easy way. It's weird, we worked together for a while and he was continuing to smoke and kind of was hiding it. He would never smoke around me or anyone we work with, anyone he was friends with. He just kept it really personal and I think there's you know, some amount of shame in it, which I feel bad. He doesn't need to feel shameful, especially around me, but I don't think about cigarettes hardly ever. I do still think about them occasionally. Sometimes it'll just dawn on me that I was a smoker and that, man, it might be nice to be a smoker again. And like, I think, man, you don't want to be in any part of that mess ever again. It's very rare that those thoughts even come on. 
It's like extremely rare. But when he would be around or and like I'd either smell cigarettes or, you know, as we're driving away, catch him lighting up and like ashing out his window or something. Those thoughts, it's it's rather than them kind of coming upon themselves in your head, it's like an outside factor bringing them on. So I'll just say it is easier to maintain a quit if you aren't around smokers, if it's not kind of in your worldview. It's just a kind of a fact. You'll be less likely to think about smoking if there aren't smokers around. And like I said, those thoughts are always going to be there. Once you're addicted to nicotine, you're kind of always addicted. So I assume that I'm gonna have kind of those thoughts forever. And while they have like no power over me, it's not to say that like I don't have to be active in my quit. Those thoughts are enough that like if I just kind of left my principles and my discipline and like put them off to the side, I might legitimately pick it up again. I still have to be active in it even if it's easy, you know? So if I'm going to have those thoughts and I'm going to have to battle those as little as those battles are, keeping those numbers low by keeping smokers kind of out of my um, periphery, if I can. Obviously, if you have family or close friends that do, you don't want to lose your family and close friends. But if you can, you know, not be around them when they are smoking, that's helpful. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, there's a streamer I really enjoy watching and he was watching another streamer and this streamer was talking about quitting smoking and he did it cold turkey and he read Alan Carr's book, The Easy Way to Stop Smoking. And I didn't like the way that he was addressing his audience. I may actually do a reaction to the video I'm talking about. He was talking about the fact that it is so easy to quit smoking. He goes, I read that book and then the next day I quit smoking and it was just so easy. Once you understand everything in that book, it can't be hard for anyone. And like, if you guys are, he essentially made it feel like if you were an audience member watching his video and you were had quit smoking, if it wasn't super easy for you, it's like you were doing something wrong or you're like a bad person or something. And I just don't think that that's a fair way to frame it. I read that same book and Alan Carr pretty much says that it was super easy for him as well once he understood everything. And I will say to a degree, my quit seems kind of easy. I kind of was lucky in the beginning of my quit. You never know what your relationship with your quit is going to be like. I've had to quit like a million times and some were just so painful and some weren't as painful. It's just being in a different mindset or even maybe your biology is like a little different at any given time and is a little bit more willing to get off the drug. But in any case, I don't think that you're doing anything wrong if your quit is hard. Even if you understand everything, if you were to read the easy way and you understand addiction, you understand what you need to do, I think that everybody's relationship with the drug is like a little bit different. You can say it was super easy for me, but I think you should also give the caveat of it may not feel that easy for you. So don't be discouraged if it doesn't feel easy. I can promise you that if you continue, it will get easier. But if it starts out hard, then you just gotta kind of bear down and stick to it. And if it is so hard that you don't succeed this time around, don't worry that the next time is necessarily going to be that hard, because it may not be. It's just the fact that for whatever reason, we're constantly changing. The world is constantly changing around us. I don't know how many times I've, I've actually tried to quit before this last time, but I mean, I had a few very long ones and I had a bunch where I quit for like three days at a time. I had a bunch where I quit like a week or two weeks at a time. Every single one of those until this last one was hard enough that at some point I gave up. If I let that inform my perception as to believe, well, it's just too hard, then I wouldn't have tried the next time. That may have been easier or harder than the previous time. And then I wouldn't have gotten to this point where I got to this one where now I'm four years, four months in. So. In any case, I just wanted to touch base and tell you guys what I was thinking, remind you that I'm doing well, that I'm still off cigarettes and off nicotine, in case any of you were worried about me. 
I'm still going strong and I feel great. And I just wanted to tell you some of the things that were on my mind. I do read comments on this channel and even on my other channel where I have some of these videos posted. I always look forward to hearing from people that are quitting and who are having a good time. I actually look forward to the comments where people are having a bad time too. Because while I don't think about them all the time, when people remind me of what they're going through, it reminds me of the periods of time that I went through things and that can help me to address those things in these videos maybe a little bit better anyway thank you so much for listening drop me a comment tell me what you're doing if you're still trying to quit if you've been successful in your quit thanks folks we will talk soon i always say i'm going to make a video sooner than the year mark but here we are another year later but thanks folks i'll talk to you next time peace